For our chalice lighting this morning, the symbol of our tradition, the words in the wisdom of Katie Romano Griffin, invoking the past, present, and future. Come, let us enter this space of hope and community. Come, let us enter this space with our sorrows, our joys, our passion, and our compassion. Come. Let us enter the space with the stories of our ancestors, for their strength and wisdom beats in our hearts. Come into this space, present to the beloved companions who move beside us. Come into this space, mindful that together we are building a future for other generations. Come. Come into this space and let us worship which means let us lift up and focus on those things that are most worthy of our hearts, of our minds, of our actions. Come, come into this space and let us worship. And so we have light. Good morning, everyone. Welcome, 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 welcome. On this morning, one day before what is now Indigenous Peoples Day, officially in the nation, I am very, yeah, yeah. I am very glad and grateful to welcome once again Shelley Covert, spokesperson of the Nevada City Rancheria Nisenan tribe the indigenous people of this area, and the executive director of the tribally guided nonprofit known as CHIRP, the California Heritage Indigenous Research Project, whose mission, whose mission is to preserve, protect, and perpetuate Nisenan culture. Shelley, welcome. I invite you to bless our, the beginning of our time together. Hey, 
Thank you. And in a song familiar to many of us, we will sing our youngest members on their way to Kids Connection, This Little Light of Mine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Shelby, again, welcome and thank you for taking time to be here. I know your time is precious, and I also know that the gift of your voice is precious, not to be taken for granted. Thank you. Thanks for entering this space, too. Yeah. The space on Mason on land that cannot help but hold the spirit of your ancestors, as well as a land that cannot help but hold the legacies of the gold rush amplified hostility to the Mason on. The space this morning that cannot help but be strewn with our earnest, well meaning intentions, as well as with the assumptions and expectations that have shaped us without our even knowing it. Welcome to each of you, to each of us. Whatever urged you to make your way out of bed and compelled you to be present on this day, at this time, whether here in this room or whether in the Zoom room online, we are glad and grateful for you are here. And our Zoom folks are... I invite you to wave to our Zoom folks. Yeah, welcome. Welcome. Our joys and sorrows this morning, for those who are familiar with our weekly tradition, are here at the entrance of the room. So anytime before, during, and after the service, you're welcome to take a stone and put it in that bowl of water to honor all the joys and the sorrows and the in-betweens that you're carrying with you this morning. And before and after, George Dunstan will be a presence. George is a member of our lay pastoral care team that helps pay attention to our well-being and accompany us along the way. We meet in a circle this morning, our faces visible to one another in honor of the round nature of so many indigenous cultures and values. We meet bringing our many layers of identities, each of us, identities seen and unseen. We meet too bringing our layers of elation and grief and consternation and confusion and wonder and joy, all that we hold in our hearts and in our bodies this morning. We meet as complex, unique individuals and as members of a shared community willing to be linking our journeys, if only for this hour. We meet convinced of our rightness and our righteousness and with humility and no certainty at all. We meet open-hearted as well as cautious and guarded. We meet with longing and with hope, 
carrying our if-onlys and our prayers. We meet to change the world together, and we meet to be ourselves changed. We meet as we do each Sunday, offering as much of ourselves as we dare, and witnessing as much of each other as our hearts and our armor will allow. May this hour together meet us where we are and invite us to the growing edge of who we are. Meet us where we are and invite us to the growing edge of who we are. With that in mind, I invite us, even though I know this is not comfortable for everyone, but to rise in body or in spirit and to say hello to those folks who are around you. You're not alone this morning, so let's see who's with you. I invite you to take a moment to greet the people around you. acknowledgement this morning is offered by Burnell Scott and Carmen Riley and you. I'll invite us into our words together. We begin with Carmen. Here each Sunday we renew our commitment to remember. And our commitment is to, be to be in right relationship with the descendants of this area's indigenous people. We, we place the small each week. We do this every Sunday to remind ourselves to pay attention, to learn, to remember that the effects of history continue to live in people's lives and bodies including our own. And why acorns? Because acorns were a vital source of sustenance for the nation on, and because the oak trees carry the effects of histories in their bodies too. In doing so, we acknowledge the Nisim still here to us today, though nearly invisible after generations of erasure and exclusion from California's history. Still here and understandably cautious about being seen, may we see what the Nisanon want us to see. To stand, we are on Nisanon land that was never ceded, and the original tribal families have yet to recover from the genocide of their people. Beth Carroll likes to point out that seeded is spelled C-E-D-E-D, -E -E meaning never given up. It's important to note that the land was taken, and that genocide is the accurate word. As residents or the visitors in Nisanon land, we support the Nevada City Ranch as well as to campaign to restore tribal sovereignty through federal recognition. May we offer our support with respect and care, with commitment and hope, 
with humility and with love. May we be so. May, may, may we be so. In the 2021 proclamation of Indigenous Peoples Day, just a couple years ago, acknowledging and honoring the other sides of the Columbus Day story, President Biden noted, since time immemorial, American Indians, Alaska Natives, and Native Hawaiians have built vibrant and diverse cultures, safeguarding land, language, spirit, knowledge, and tradition across the generations. On Indigenous Peoples Day, our nation celebrates the invaluable contributions and resilience of Indigenous peoples, recognizes their inherent sovereignty, and commits to honoring the federal government's trust and treaty obligations to the tribal nations. Our, our country, he goes on, was conceived on a promise of equality and opportunity for all people, a promise that despite the extraordinary progress we have made through the years, we have never fully lived up to. That is especially true when it comes to upholding the rights and dignity of the indigenous people who were here long before colonization of the Americas began. For generations, federal policies systemically sought to assimilate and displace Native people and eradicate Native cultures. Today, we recognize Indigenous peoples' resilience and strength, as well as the immeasurable positive impact they have made on every aspect of American society. We also commit, he goes on, to supporting a brighter future of promise and equity for tribal nations, a future grounded in tribal sovereignty and respect for the human rights of indigenous people in the Americas and around the world. Nice words, nice words. Today, as well as throughout the year, we seek here among us to recognize indigenous people's resilience and strength, yes. And we seek to better understand the violent realities that have required and continue to require their resilience, including the unconscious realities we hold in us, in our behaviors, in our thinking, again, without even knowing it. As we have learned here at other times, when it comes to the Nisanan and the federal government's trust and treaty obligations, the gap between them is astonishingly and painfully large. So each week, we recommit to support a new, brighter future of promise and equity for the Nevada City Rancheria Nisanan tribe. As we tune our hearts to listen, to hear what we need to hear, an invitation through the insight, the wisdom, the words of our own Eileen Hale. Lean tight, listening to indigenous. Let yourself be earth, listening to rain. Make your mind welcoming soil. Let your surface be reservoir. Let the wetness land on you, accumulate, sit on you, puddling. Let it be slow in its sinking in, drop by drop by steady drop. When the mind is parched, when the soil has forgotten how to sit in silence and receive the words of the rain, let it come to you. Let it land and settle and be absorbed. Give it time to sink in, to be received by the roots and particles that know what they're doing without words. Be earth listening to rain.
Ah, I thought a couple minutes of rain might be good for all of us. Yeah, Shelly, welcome. So grateful you're here. So Shelly and I are going to approach our time together conversationally for a bit. And uh, so again, thanks for being your presence. And uh, this is, what, you number four or five, maybe, you've been here to speak. <laughs> and the thing is, things keep happening. And you've mentioned several times um, the way you're always learning new things that are shedding light, not only on the history and the realities of the legal parts of it, but also just knowledge of your ancestors and the life, the universe, and everything and that keeps changing you. So I'm wondering if you'd share with us since last year, since you've been here with us, what's, what have you been learning and realizing and uh, coming to this year? Mm -hmm. I keep um, waiting to get a certain age and I'll just like, oh, I know, or I'm not naive anymore, or I don't have to feel like a baby, or I just continually find myself in that mindset of like, I thought that would go away at some point, you know, um, but is, I guess it's just because there are so many topics that the tribe is connected to and that in turn, that's because everything affects the tribe. And the reason it is my learning experience is because of my position in the families and in the tribe is that I have been appointed spokesperson and I wish it was just like to read things sometimes like, oh, you know, I'll read that on an ad or something, but it's, it's really, um, you know, it's, I, no one said it was my responsibility necessarily. I, I don't think it's written in blood somewhere that I have to take it and do it and hold the responsibility of it, but I do. And <laughs> Um, I do, uh, sure, to hold over my cousins if I need a favor or something someday, um, but I kid, um, because I saw my mom do it, I saw my grandpa do it, to whatever um, was in their time, in their echelon, and the, the platforms that they were fighting about in their day is so different from what we have before us today. Um, my mom, in her time, she was just trying to let people know, you know, there are other tribes than just federally recognized tribes there. She's the one that talked about all the terminated California rancherias and started on that. Um, every, it's like every little topic that pops up is a lifetime or two of research and understanding, you know, of like, what does that mean? And um, I think, because I know the history of our tribe here, I know how just horrifically violent and, um, you know, no matter whose history you're reading, the, the Native people here are always at the, the bottom rung of the ladder. Um, even of the most despicable characters that were out here, um, who were just really bad people, I guess you could say, um, which wasn't everybody, of course, but even below the least educated and the smelliest. I mean, her minors were really smelly at some point in time. And I'm just like, isn't that a factor in that? Where's the list of, you know, where the people get put? Um, but, you know, literally some of the worst people um, in character, in no morality, ethics, that kind of stuff. It doesn't matter. The Native people were always below. They're always the kicking thing for someone and uh you know the shame that comes wrapped in the knowledge of that i mean i i didn't i feel like i'm pretty okay most of the time and you know i had a lot of friends in school of all different i had swimmers and the football folks and i was in choir and i had to hang out with the aggies like i have always loved a, a diverse group of people around me um and I love that today, but it's trying to find how, when you're told long enough, no matter whose history you're reading, and they somebody starts narrating about how disgusting the Indians here are, 
even I feel it in awe. I feel like I've got all my, talk about our armor that we come with. I feel that I have a lot of armor and I truly do like people. And I think that if we're, we're all smart enough to figure out anything, you know, um, synonyms are my friend. Notice that people get up in arms about certain things and get their defenses up and you switch a couple words out and everybody's okay in the room. <laughs> and they're like, more of that, you know, and figuring it out together. But undoing, if I even feel reading this ancient, dusty old narration of some old guy who you know, was building his career on researching and talking about our people, and just it's the derogatory way that was so embedded in, and I know this happens throughout time with different folks get the, the bottom the rung of the ladder you know I know it's happened all over the planet I know it's happening right now um but it's so hard to go and look for linguistic materials and have to like slog through someone's narrative that um I especially don't want my daughter seeing it I don't want them to go so to have that moment where you're like oh they're talking about us like what what was wrong with us that you know, we're, we're being spoken about this way. And I, my biggest thing that I think is, over, in answer to your very small question, um, um, the, the thing that is touching everything for me right now is um, how can these violent, disturbing things, and it's not just like, oh, I'm from a small country, our people are growing, we want your land, I'm gonna come kill you all. Like, at least there would be some semblance of um, expediency, I don't know, in that. But the killings and the, the way people were treated, there's this, like, it's topics for horror films. There's this twisted, gross, mean, evil, dark thing that happens, and it's so widespread throughout the histories here that um, I, I just don't know how we can go on as humans, people, without going, hold on a minute, pop, you know, pause everything, all economy, all everything. And we, we need to see what's wrong with us. <laughs> and because I know it continues to happen. And so that's like the overlying where I feel sometimes I'm so naive and I didn't, you know, it's like all the things you didn't want to know. Um, and they're so readily available in these histories locally. And it's, it's some of the worst. Um, and, um, and that's rough. It's rough because it makes everything else that I do in my life feel mundane. Like, you know, <laughs> I'm showing up for, I don't know, we're going to do a sign or something like that. I'm like, but humanity, you know, <laughs> what about this that we should all as a planet just be pausing and and figuring out something is something's bad something's broken in there something something needs to be addressed and um and that lingers because i maybe it'll happen i don't know maybe a summit will be called tomorrow um but that's the hardest thing for me and then i feel um that everything else just has some level of healing in comparison, dealing with the federal government and the brokenness. I've learned more about how broken things are and we've uncovered fraud. And I mean, just all these things. And I'm just like, I'm to the point now, of course, everything is going to be awful. And if something isn't, at least I don't have expectations and I'll be happily surprised about things. But as I get deeper and deeper into those kind of things, um, that's how I've been feeling. And and it, um, I need my happy Shelly bubble to move out into the world most of the time because uh, I do stay pretty happy and I don't let this stuff tank me. But, like, it's so big that, you know, it's, and then something beautiful, like hearing you all read that stuff, like, am I in the chair? Like, oh, no, my God, this is amazing. Because this, that, um, it makes me, I can be so happy and so sad at the same time is possibly where the weirdness is. And then just throw the subjects in there and then, you know, that's how I am on any given day, trying to keep going forward, going forward. And um, yeah. I think about this to breathe for a moment with Shelly, yeah. with, gr with gratitude, right? For, yeah. for your willingness to name 
the, the weight of that, mm -hmm. the way that moves inside you. Mm -hmm. And as we, as we enter that breathing, I'll, re I'll remind us that part of our work is not to let our own discomfort, our own sadness, mm -hmm. our own uh, guilt, if that's what arises for us, get in the way. Mm -hmm. Not make it about us, right? Just receive, listen, take in. So it sounds like that learning about more of this has been one of the big pieces of this last year. Mm -hmm. That, yeah, yeah, powerful. Are there are there anything else you want to name about what surprised you in this year, or new information that came up that shed new light, or that mm -hmm. got you thinking or feeling differently, or? or uh, yeah. Um. I know a lot of things in Indian country, you know, uh, since Deb Holland has been um, put in her office that she's in, we've learned about missing and murdered indigenous women, which has been more um, out front than it ever, ever was. And I learned a new term about gaslighting. Like I didn't know what that was before. And I was like, now that I know, I'm like, oh my good, it explains so much. <laughs> um, because when we talked about the high statistics of missing and murdered indigenous women in the past, it's been met with like, you know, people go missing all the time. And why are you guys like, I love being able to say what trolls say um, out loud. Um, you know, why are you, what makes you guys so special that you have the most missing and murdered people? And I'm like, that's not something any community would be like, woo, we, you know, we got the number one slot. Um, and and then also about the boarding schools is that nobody in native community that I know of talked about it and nobody outside the native community knew about it unless literally like somebody's parents worked at one. I mean, they're very small uh, circles of knowing. And um, now that that has been talked about, you know, Canada first came out with they were finding all the big graves at the boarding schools up in Canada. And I remember telling friends, just wait till they pop the cork on that down here. You know, it's going to be the same thing. Uh, now that these things are being investigated, um, it's the weirdest thing to overhear people talking about these things. This is weird. And I feel ultra protective around the elders because our, our families don't talk about anything, anything. Drugs, alcohol, abuse, um, poverty. I mean, all the things that I talk about daily in my our nonprofit we don't talk about those things internally. And, um, and so now, but when you hear it outside and it's a, it, they don't have a choice anymore, not that they ever did, but I have to make sure that I'm um, just starting with the work of my friend Eve here and other folks about historical and intergenerational trauma and all these things that like the tribe knows nothing about these things. And uh, again, it's another one of my moments where I was like, I'm so naive because I just thought our family was weird. That's all, you know? And now I see they start talking about this trauma stuff and I'm like, oh, that, that sounds familiar. You know, you start going, that sounds familiar. That sounds familiar, checking off all these things. But, you know, having these things daylighted is, is a step in the right direction. And also knowing that how vulnerable that makes um, our most vulnerable populations within the tribe, which are the elders who have the direct knowledge. And they, and again, and I do it, I have to watch myself too, because I, I'm extracted. I wanna know about all their experiences and how that made them feel, especially with my mom and my grandma was here, you know. Um, but that's, furthering the damage and have to be very careful of that. So again, it's like one of those times when these things are happening, this is this has never happened before. And I think um, there are other opportunities as the land back, rematriation, uh, land acknowledgement topics keep going. Because at first I was such an eye roll when Gavin Newsom apologized for the genocide and I was you know, and people started doing land acknowledgements, and I was just like, sure, check your box here, read this, you know, um, and it's made such a difference that um, I've never been so happy to eat my words and take back all my eye rolls, um, and, uh, but it's making a difference because it's, it's providing the platform for people who may have wanted to help, but just didn't 
know how, why, or whatever shape that would take. So um, we have had an offer from Woman School. So uh, are you guys familiar with the Woman land? It's a 220 to 40 acres um, out off of Bitney Springs Road. It was the first Quaker high school out here, this side of the Mississippi that uh, was ever in existence. Um, and so anyway, they are going to be folding their operations at that land and they have offered us a time barred exclusive uh, dollar amount for us to have the offer for us to get the land. And people keep congratulating us because, and I'm like, whoa, 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 you know, we still have to raise more, <laughs> we have to, that it's $1.2 million. Um, they have debt that they need to retire and responsibilities that is that price tag. Um, if it was sold on the open market, it would go for much more. So I think all the great intentions are there and then we still live in this world. It's just like, you have to have money to whatever. So that is, had all these other things not happen and we got into the place in the conversation we are today as a community and as a country and all the stuff, you know, so much more work to do still. But this would never could have happened 10 years ago. It wouldn't have happened. And so um, if you start seeing our faces out there asking everybody on the planet for money, because I hate asking for money, um, just I hope uh, my disclaimer, um, if you know me or in, come in uh, area of me or Eve or our little fundraising team that we've never had one before, we're going to make a fundraising team, <laughs> um, or you have skills at that, uh, we'll probably be, you'll be hearing from us and I'm sure it'll get annoying at some point. So I know I'm the worst pitch person ever. Like you're gonna hate giving me money and I don't want you to do it any either, but you know. <laughs> Piece. Yes. Yeah. So that, I mean, yes. And, that, and tempered exciting news. Tempered. Right? What a great possibility and not a given yet. Yeah. What a great opportunity. Thank you. Um, and thanks for the reminder that things that we might think are great to talk about, the boarding schools, et cetera, right? Actually, for, for the people, it's a different thing. We might be very well meaning and are wanting to bring it up or pursue it, but you Mom, caught, I overheard caution. mom saying, I think it was. Last year, when you took your mom, when your mom was here, um, but I overheard her saying to somebody that, "Oh, there are things she hasn't even told her daughter yet," and I was like, "What? Wait a minute!" And I instantly, I'm like, "That's my right to know everything," uh, you know, and going and really having to deal with that because I'm a spoiled rotten only child. I'm sure is part of it, but thinking that, you know, <laughs> I mean, my own mother, and really having to. Um, I did ask her, and she said, in time, if ever, I will tell you. And it just kills me, because me, knowing there's a secret that I don't get to know um, is tr pure torture. But it's not my right to keep it distracted. Right, and not ours, right? I think that's a great reminder to, yeah, to, for absolutely. our own sensitivity, those of us who are not listening, right? Or not part of any group, right, that is working on something. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else you'd say about the federal recognition that's been you know, a through line for the, uh, a pursuit in the process? Any update on your So daughters? you all know Mr. Frank Lawrence. He's a part of this community. Um, we've been working with Frank Lawrence and Brian Daniels now for almost four years, um, trying to figure out after we lost our federal court case, is there an, a path for us? And um, so it's taken this long with these brilliant people who, I'm just so great. They, most people I've known in this topic have told me what we need to do. And we go, okay. And we go down that and, you know, face plant into the wall where it's like, oh, that wasn't for us. We can't go through this process because we're terminated or we can't do this or that because of this and that. So anyway, but these, these guys will, go, let's go back and read the legislation on that and <laughs> go back. They're like, we need to educate ourselves before we can educate anybody else. And it's fabulous. So we did recently put in our petition um, to get just a meeting uh, with Brian Newland, uh, who is deputy with DuPont and they denied our meeting. And so I'm sitting with that. Um, I've heard other rumors, you know, people change in these positions and with the change comes a newer generation most of the time. 
that has a different way that you know native topics are being shaped these days. So there have been uh, some big changes re very very recently that I have a whole bunch of hope that might might make a difference, might not. I don't know. Um, but it's been four years we've been trying to figure out, is there a path for us um, outside of legislation? And because everybody, they're like, legislation is like playing craps. It's, you know, we don't have, if, unless you have lobbyists, <laughs> I guess, if, unless, and I'm like, you need money for lobbyists. We don't have any money. We're not getting a lobbyist. But it takes all of us, if we all could somehow get on the page where we think it's a good idea and you know, to support in some way, and we're just annoyingly, obnoxiously, ridiculously loud and just keep asking and asking and asking, maybe something would happen. Um, but it's still, it's still the, who knows? I don't know where, I, I've, I've been saying, if you have a bag and if you've got like genocide in there and broken treaties and all these illegal things, you got a little fraud in there, if you get like five things in your bag, shouldn't they be just like, well, you got five things in your bag. Yeah, whatever you need, go ahead. <laughs> or even two or three things in the bag. Um, and it's just, there's so much there that that's the other thing. I'm just like, like justice, right. You know, um, the, and I can't let that sink in because then I get all bitter and rotten and mean. And, um, and that's not what I'm supposed to do. So, uh, but yeah, I mean, it is some movement whether it's going to mean anything at all, all this time and energy, um, other than learning how naive I am. Mm -hmm. I just, uh, I don't know. But at some point in time, I, I keep thinking, like, this isn't going to end up being a community thing, you know. So still still a goal, and uh, to that uh, extremely meandering path. Mm -hmm. yeah, and a part of what I heard in there was an invitation, too, when you're talking about people telling you what to do, and it's not the thing that works for you. It's one of the things we uh, try to remind ourselves is to not know what's best for you, mm -hmm. right? But to listen to listen yeah. to you, listen to the tribe, say, yes. what is it that you need? And yes. so I'm going to ask you about that in a moment, but mm -hmm. I wanted to give us a chance to breathe again with uh, two minutes at the creek up at Condon Park, just awesome. up the hill. So as a way just to center ourselves for a moment, and what I'll ask you when we come back is what you want us looking mm -hmm looking mostly white and of a certain age, mm -hmm. what you want us to know, you know, what you want us to remember, mm -hmm. and what you want us to do. So let's take, let's take a moment first to um, be ready for that.
And of course, you're welcome not to answer this question too, <laughs> Shelley. But if you, if there is something you would like to say, either and, you know, and or and any of these about what you want us, what you, if we, if it was if was one thing important for us to remember, something important for us to know, and mm -hmm. or something important for us to do mm -hmm. in this moment, we'd be grateful for that. Um, I think what you all have done so incredibly well is just like carved out a living space for us um, in the community here in just making it relevant today and not like so much of my life is in the documents of the past, you know, or talking about the past. And, um, and I, uh, with our Ancestral Homelands Reciprocity Program, which is the community um, vehicle for people who give monthly uh, donations to our nonprofit. I love what, you know, some people give $3 a month. Um, some people give more if they can. But, like, we have some businesses that participate. And Heartwood has their Heartwood Bowl, which is their most popular bowl. And they give us a dollar of the proceeds from that bowl. And I would hope that that's an easy, uh, easy lift for them. It's not going to tank their business, and they're going to go under because they're overgiving to us, you know, trying to help us or whatever. Um, I look for that. Like, I, again, I think we're all creative enough to find the ways where, because I want to help everybody. I want to say yes to everybody and everything. Um, and I really have to watch my own limits. But when I can do something that's, I mean, like, what can I do of relevance for somebody else? Um, I, and it's easy for me. Uh, I'm, I will be there. Uh, I hope people know that about me in the community is like, I, you know, I'm all, I, and I keep my, I keep, I keep track of everything. I, people have done favors me, what I've done, making sure I'm trying to be balanced in the middle somewhere just for my own well being. Um, but, ways we can work together um, that's easy for everybody. I know some of this work isn't easy. And again, that's probably a naive way that, sure, we can do all this great hard work and it'll be easy. Um, but what are the ways, thought processes, um, you know, mentioning or uh, putting a land acknowledgement on your web page or sharing with your network and friends, bringing up, <laughs> I love it, bringing up some of the uncomfortable topics. Some of our family members don't want to talk about social justice and racial justice and things like this, you know, and um, I'm one who doesn't usually bring it up um, and may not, if I wasn't in the position I'm in today where it just comes up, because you know, because that's kind of what I talk about, I guess. But, um, you know, being able to, like, it's like, even if somebody just opens the door a little bit to conversation that it ends up not falling on selfishly my shoulders, if an ally can do something, and maybe it's not quite as uncomfortable for Rev Kev to go in and say, hey, blah, 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 where I am, you know, literally breaking out in hives, because um, I have to go into a new meeting, and people are speaking in acronyms, and I'm just like, oh, my God. Um, that's, that's what I love, the continued creation of whatever that is, because we don't have it yet. It's showing up in little packets and, and being visible in the community. Um, but we've never had this before, and so we're still in, like, the idea phase of how can we as a community, like, change the lives of any given topic, group of people, you know, or things that need help in this world, like our water and stuff here. Um, how can we do that? And it's just a littler lift for each person, but then together it ends up making a real impact. That's what I really, really want. Um, I do feel a little bad when people are putting themselves on the line for us, especially if there's a little, I mean, some people are just heroes and warriors and that's fine. But if there's, if it's tinged with, um, well, I do all this for the people or, you know, I, I don't know how to say a lot of these things, but there, it that can feel bad. And so just having it be, having the support be authentic and, easy as easy as it possibly can be for anybody who is there partnering with us or being allies I think um, is my main desire when it starts getting lopsided things start we're too fresh uh, it hasn't been solidified and identified and so if it gets weird and somebody's feeling overtaxed or something things get weird and there can be 
it can just go askew uh, really easily. So, um, and always reaching out if, you know, you have ideas. I just think it's gonna be that amazing think tank of a bunch of people from a bunch of different backgrounds uh, that come together and find the answer. <laughs> I was thinking like we, if we stop the federal recognition stuff and we had all as a community for all these years just been trying to write the one hit wonder Maybe we'd have enough money for the tribe that we wouldn't even have to get federal recognition or something. <laughs> like, are we on the wrong path? Should have been the one hit wonder path we should have been going on. But who knows what the what the idea and impetus for um, you know, this community change could be. Thank you. Thank you for your generosity again and being here, but also sharing in, in a way that uh, is vulnerable. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Rogan. I'm, I'm hearing. Oh, thank you. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Happy birthday. I've been subtracting my age, too. <laughs> I'm going the other way. Birthday, <laughs> birthday in a couple of days. Happy birthday. Um, and I hear in there the, I hear in there the invitation to, to um, uh, not make assumptions. And I was, I was going to say, when in doubt, ask. But I would say, ask. <laughs> Don't wait for being in doubt, even, right? And we might... <laughs> we might we might think something is the right thing to do, but to check in to indeed find out. Yeah. And you've already mentioned the Ancestral Homelands Reciprocity Program, a helpful lead in. So the homes we live in, the buildings we meet in, the stores we shop in, the local concert places we listen to music in are all on land that was once stewarded by and home to the local Nisanan. Land that was taken over, cleared, and stolen from underneath them. As official and unofficial people and policies sought to exterminate both the indigenous peoples and their histories here and throughout the nation. Meaning that materially, we benefit from those legacies, right? We get to meet in this building on this land because of that. So with this in mind and heart a number of years ago and inspired by efforts in other places, some community members here in Grass Valley in Nevada City launched that initiative to try to provide ongoing financial support to the Nevada City Rancheria Nisanan tribe. The vision of the Ancestral Homelands Reciprocity Program is to raise visibility and awareness of the Nisanan so all who work and live in the Bear and Yuba River watersheds Notice what designates the landscape. The Bear and Yuba River watersheds can come together to honor the original peoples of this land. By contributing to the stability and restoration of the Nisanan, the vision continues, we can begin to transform our community and our culture into one based on integrity and respect for the right of all beings. Many of us participate personally in the Ancestral Homelands Reciprocity Program, and this congregation as a whole does as well. Each year now for several years, in a special line item in the budget, which members approve, which is why we keep it a special line item, in a special line item which members approve, you've been setting aside $1,200 for the Ancestral Homelands Reciprocity Program. So doing that, I would suggest, is not only about supporting the Nisanan, and not only about cultivating a culture based on integrity and respect, it's also about cultivating our own integrity in this very small way. It's about our own integrity and wholeness too. So we have UUCM's annual check to hand to Shelley today in order to make more visible to you members and friends that we do this for those who did not know, and also to encourage you to consider doing the same in your own life, plus, we have a giant check for the congregation to hand to Shelley. And I talked this through with Shelley ahead of time with just the idea of who's being served by this, right? So I'll tell you that uh, several years ago, I was very reluctant to do something like this. It seems self-serving, right? Let's just, sh let's just show off ourselves until a colleague pointed out, they said, when we take a picture like that and get it in the paper, it is publicity for the people we're trying to serve. And I'm going to suggest we amp that up a little bit this year when we turn that into the union, for example, that we put in there an invitation, encouragement, a challenge, really, to other organizations and churches to do the same, right? 
So I'm going to invite us, I'm going to invite Cheryl to, to give the check to Shelly. So this is the, your annual contribution to CHIRP. And I'm going to invite us in a, in a messy way for anyone who's willing to gather here, you know, kind of around the middle here, come this way a bit, and we'll, we're going to do a group photo of, of handing Shelly the check. So Shelly, if you'd come on up here. And the rest, anyone who's willing, a little bit messy for a moment, we're going to take this photo. Paul's going to take this photo for us. Come on, Cheryl's bringing the check. Come on, pile in behind, around. We'll get we'll get a bunch of the room here. So if we get about here over, about here over. So anyone who's near the front here can put a hand on, get hands on, lots of hands on the on the yeah. Anyone who really doesn't want to be in the picture. All right, I think we're ready. Paul is up here on the ladder. Thank you. We want to do that. I want to do that right in the service, right? Not as something separate, but this is what we do. This is what we do. So thank you. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. I invite you to your seats. And Cheryl, I invite here. Invitation. Thank, thank you, everyone. And, uh, Ethanon, who have lived in this place for many centuries. We remember especially their belief that all things are respected and connected. The earth, the plants, and the animals that live on it, and the humans who dwell among them. It is fitting, then, that our community partner this month is wildlife rehabilitation and, re and release. 25% of your offering, and more if you so desire, will be shared with this organization. They are dedicated to the care and rehabilitation of injured and orphaned wildlife, and each year they successfully release over 100 different species of native wildlife, including mammals, songbirds, raptors, waterfowl, reptiles, and amphibians. If you'd like 100% of your offering to go to them, place it in the white envelope in the collection basket. And our slide will tell you other ways to give.
Thank you for your generosity. We dedicate these gifts to the well-being of all who dwell in these lands. Thank you to Cheryl for being worship associate today. Uh, thank you so much, Shelley, for being here and singing too. It's lovely to hear your voice always, moving and lovely. Yeah. That was Julie Tillinghast singing in the video, a former member who has since moved out of state. Paul and Cypress are our AV folks. Thank you, thank you very much. Beth Caro is our chat host today. Eileen got to be here on site in person. Shanti, thanks for another beautiful setting in both locations here with feathers from Shelley. Thanks to our greeters always that makes such a difference. Glenn and Jean and Carl. Refreshments uh, today, Beth Rose, Martha Turner, everyone who brought food and up with Kids Connection, Linda Siska and um, Lindsay Dunkel. Just a reminder that Women's Circle meets tomorrow evening. Come join. Buildings and Grounds work party is a day early this month, on Saturday the 14th, next Saturday. Great, great chance to come and be together and do some good. And the Spirituality Sharing Circle meets next Saturday. A great chance to come, share a bit, have some silence together. And as always, check the e-chalice and the website to find out what's coming. So you'll notice that Toby's not here today. Toby was sick this week, and uh, we had already planned you know, nature sounds. That worked pretty well. But we do have a final song to sing, which I'm going to invite you to rise in body or in, in spirit to sing. Circle round for freedom. Circle round for peace for all of us imprisoned. Circle for release. Circle for the planet. Circle for each soul. For the children of our children. Keep the circle whole. Circle round for freedom, circle round for peace, for all of us in prison, circle for release, circle for the planet, circle for each soul. Piece by piece, learning by learning, right action by right action, stumble by stumble, may we indeed begin to transform our community and our culture into one based on integrity and respect for the rights of all beings, and so find our own wholeness along the way. Remembering that we are not alone in this journey, any of us, we share these good words with each other. Let us together carry the flame of peace and love until we meet again. Please join us for refreshments. And Shelly, are you open to conversation with folks? Yes. And we'll see you, and we'll see you next Sunday for a service. <laughs> we'll see you next Sunday. We'll see you next. We'll see you next Sunday. <laughs> <laughs>